On any given day, there are 2.7 million children who currently have a parent incarcerated in America. And over 10 million people have experienced a parent behind bars at some point in their lives. This is not a unique story. This is a part of the American story. From the lenses of young adults, this podcast explores the harm of poverty, mass incarceration, the beauty and resilient relationships, and the pain of fractured wounds. Join our co-hosts as they enter the sanctuary with our guests in this episode of If Only You Knew. In this episode, our guest Kenny Clark, NFL player with the Green Bay Packers, is here to share his story of his father's incarceration when Kenny was just nine years old. Hi, Mr. Clark. We're so glad to have you here with us today via Zoom. And welcome to our sanctuary. Just to let you know, our sanctuary is a safe place where we can share our stories of resilience to help others heal. Um, To begin, my name is Omari McDuffie. I'm from Washington, D.C., and that's where I am right now in this call. Appreciate you guys for having me, and uh, nice to meet you guys, all you guys. And uh, just excited about this opportunity and, uh, you know, excited to get a chance to talk, you know, to talk to you guys and talk, uh, you know, about my story. Thank you. Um, Elias, you can introduce yourself. We're going to all take turns of introducing ourselves just so you can know who we are. Hello, my name is Elias Nannis, and I'm talking from New York City, um, Queens. My name is Mia. Um, I'm currently calling in from New York City. I'm visiting. Um, I live in Winston-Salem. And I'll be going to Salem College. And lastly, my name is Anaya Roche. I'm calling in from Harlem, New York. Um, that's where I'm from. That's where I grew up. And we just want to thank you once again for joining our podcast, If Only You Knew. So as we begin, can you share with us your story of when you first found out that your father would be going to prison and how that made you feel? Uh, when I first found out, uh, it was around I think May um I was walking outside uh it was me and my little my youngest sister we were walking outside and uh my dad was getting in the car he was getting he was getting in the car ready getting ready to leave somewhere and I think like four four or five police uh cars came up um you know drove up in front of my driveway and uh they just Opened opened up my my dad's door and then they kind of like they just beat him up really, uh, had him all against the garage, beat him up. Uh, me and my sister ran back into the house. My mom was in the shower. Me and my sister had ran, ran back into the house. Um, picked got my mom, and uh, and yeah, I mean that's you know that's that's just what it was, and that's when I first you know found out. I mean that he was going to prison. Uh, and how did I feel? I mean, it was it was it was devastating. You know, I never never experienced you know something like that. Uh, and then and then on top of that, how violent they was they they were being with my dad. Never experienced something like that too. So uh, just just seeing him, you know, like hand up against the garage and you know bleeding and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, it was it was it was devastating for me. Prison visits can be intimidating as a child. What was your experience of, um, visiting your father in prison? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I, like, at first, you know, we seen him. Uh, at first, when we, when, when I got a chance to see him, uh, it was, you know, behind the glass, and we only could talk through the phone. Um, so, so, you know, that was tough. Uh, just growing up, I think we only did that for probably like for a couple months to a year. And then, um, you know, when he got sent off to pr- prison and he got sentenced and, and or, or whatever, uh, they moved him to a different, to a different, uh, to a prison. And, you know, that's when we got a chance to, to sit down with him, uh, talk to him, be able to hug him and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, you know, you, you don't ever want to see your, your, your parent, one of your parents like that, but, uh, you know, that, that helped, you know, keep us, you know, keep us bonded. Um, me, me, me being being able to, s- to sit in his face and him being able to play with me and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, that was that was pretty cool. I remember they had like uh, they had mats and stuff out there, you know, for the kids to play. 
and he was able to come out on the mat with us, play with us, and all that kind of stuff. So that that definitely helped, um, you know, keep that relationship going with my dad. Um, it, was, it was that was pretty cool. I have a follow up question before we pass it off to the next person. Um, so you just discussed being able to visit your dad. Do you remember the first time you were able to visit him and what that experience was like and what your feelings were like and how you process all of that? Um, man, really it was, uh, he was in, I think he, he was in Calipatria the first time. Um, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect, you know, growing up, you know, you, you, you like me growing up, we were always taught not to talk to the police, not to, uh, yeah, not to be messing with the law and all that kind of stuff. Um, so when I first like walked in there, like I was like, I don't know, like how to how to act towards these people. You know what I'm saying? My mom, my my dad had had, had been in jail before, like a prior time before that. So my mom kind of knew how to. Uh, she you know she had experience with it. I was I would say she had experience with it, how to act towards them and stuff. But I'm just a kid, and and that was my. First time actually, you know, interacting with a police officer, having to take all my stuff out of my pockets, um, like all kinds of stuff. They used to like if we couldn't wear, you know, certain jeans and stuff like that. I had to experience that myself, um, and we had to wear certain colors and stuff. So we had to and walking through metal detectors. Uh, so that like that experience and like when I first went to go see him. Um, that definitely was a huge adjustment in my life, um, just just for the simple fact that I, I like I was just learning stuff on the fly and uh, trying to just yeah just learning stuff on the fly with, with just with just life and and with the law and you know with my dad being in prison. It's crazy that you um, mentioned how your relationship with the police. Like, a lot of the times in our community, most definitely, it's like, you know, mm-hmm. we don't necessarily think you can relate. You know, I don't see a reflection of myself within you. I don't think I can empathize with you or I can show sympathy with you at times. And, like, people don't understand under the surface what's really going on. Uh, like, as my mother, my father was locked up in Seattle, so I didn't really have to go in to go see him and visit him. I never got to have that opportunity necessarily, but other people who have been incarcerated, definitely that process, wearing certain colors, you know, having to take off your shoes, being stripped of everything. Like, I remember I had on um, a scarf, and uh, they asked me, was it religious? And I didn't say, it wasn't religious, but, you know, it was special to me, and it was just, like, to have that, imagine, you know, that just very cold kind of environment to then still have that love, that admiration for your father. That's, like, it is a dynamic that's really, like, yeah, it's, different for sure. Definitely. It's different. It's like, it's, and especially you know, as, as a kid doing that, you like, like you walk in there, they're like, "Man, you got on the wrong jeans," but they talking to you like you, you a grown man. Like, yeah. I, I, I didn't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know exactly. I had to have on have on these jeans. Like, you got on blue jeans. You got to go back, and my mom had to drive back, drive, to, like, and then where they have them in prison at. You know, it's a desert. It's nowhere. Like, there's no stores around. I gotta drive 30 minutes down the street to go get me some tan khakis or something, and drive back up there. And and now we wasting time. You know, doing that, and and I miss an hour or hour and a half on a visit, on a what six hour visit or whatever it is. So, yeah, it's like, you know, especially and especially just going through that as a kid. Like you like like you said, you don't relate to them. You are, you taught not to talk to them like or at least I was I was taught not to talk to the police and and all that kind of stuff. So like when you get in, when you get there, it's like a like yeah like you said it's 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 cold. It's just a cold just environment, and um it's definitely just like one of them things. It's just like like it's, I mean it's one of the things you got you got to deal with it and you know pray about it and and fight through it, but um. It's definitely, you know, a huge adjustment, especially, you know, growing up and going through the, through something like that. Yeah, I wanted to agree with, with both um, what you and Mia had mentioned. I know for me in D.C., we don't have, like, um, 
we just have a place where people are hold and then they get sent off later down the line. And one thing that I had experienced was I have really bad heart conditions. So I once had a heart monitor in for a few years. It was kind of like a defibrillator once and I was getting searched and I was explaining to the officers how I couldn't go through the medical detectives. And no matter where I go in the world, when I go on the airplane, I just show my car and I just always walk through and it's never a problem. I tried to go see my dad for the first time. He was in D.C. jail for a few months, and it was the worst process of my life. Um, I had to go in a room, and I was still a kid, maybe like 14 or 13 when this first happened. And I had to go in a room. My mom couldn't come in the room. I had to take everything off because they didn't believe I had a heart monitor. And they assumed I was sneaking drugs or something. And I'm just like, whoa. And I feel like especially being a female, um, a Black female, that most of our bodies mature at a young age. So a lot of things we couldn't wear because of the fitting of the clothes. And then my dad got sent away. I used to always be so afraid. I used to pack so many clothes because a lot of times things were um, wouldn't really be on the website. But then when you get there, you know, it gets turned around. So that was my biggest fear of getting turned around when my dad went out to like Fort Dix in New Jersey, maybe like a four hour drive. Or when he was in West Virginia, I was always afraid of like, oh, my gosh, I don't have to drive back home. And I didn't even see my dad because there was no Walmart or no H&M's close to the prison for me to get a T-shirt. So I wanted, wanted to agree with both of you on that, um, of how strict and how cold, as you mentioned, that these facilities can be even on us children. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's crazy. They tripping over your <laughs> over your condition. Yeah, that's crazy. I ain't, I ain't never heard nothing like that. But like, it's it's definitely a cold. It's it's a cold thing, man. It's just these jails and the facilities and uh, you know how how just how it is. Just it's just crazy. It doesn't have to be like that. Like, there are so many prisons that are implementing meditation and other restorative types of justice. You know, it's just change is really hard, you know, for everyone because it's something that everybody's uncomfortable with. But it seems like you having your mom there with you and you having your family there with you gave you a lot of support in a way. You know, you being there cold, like, you still had that love. You know, you still came there to show your father that love. And, like... One thing with my mom, she was very transparent and open about things, but certain things I had to learn on my own. So a question I wanted to ask you is, how was your mom about the situation with your father being incarcerated? Was she very transparent and open and not necessarily in plain English, but did she, yeah. did she kind of wait to tell you certain things or did she baby step you into that process or that uh, relationship? Yeah, she definitely, she, she waited, um, well, no, nah, she, I, I would say, cause she took us to court and all that kind of stuff. Uh, she took, she, she took us to court, uh, the first time he got like sentenced and everything. Um, but yeah, she, I think she like took like the baby steps, um, didn't really give us the full picture of, of everything that happened, but as we got older, you know, we start finding out more information, uh, you know, about, you know, everything that happens and uh, the court, what, what, like what everything means in the court, um, you know, uh, and that's something like, that's something that we always ask as kids too. Like, 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 man, like dad, why, why are you in prison? And, and what, like what happened? And like, we want to have like me, my brothers and sisters want to know all the answers. Um, but you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot to put on, you know, a kid, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot. And, uh, yeah. So I think, yeah, she, she definitely took like the baby steps. Um, as I got older, start really understanding, you know, what's, what's really going on and how, you know, the judges and, uh, the court system and the legal system work. And then, um, you know, the situation, my dad just talking to him and, and, uh, just understanding, you know, trying to understand, you know, what happened with him and, um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. So um, I definitely think she took the took that route, just, you know, just letting us get older and, you know, y'all started to figure out, you know, how this stuff worked. Um, I know for me personally, when I went to a really good school in D.C., um, 
So when my dad first became arrested and it was a lot of changes, I started taking like Metro to school for the first time and things like that. And I wasn't necessarily ashamed to say my dad was in prison, but I never told anyone. I just stopped getting a ride to school and I just started catching the train. And I was wondering for you, um, did you experience in school um, any change as far as like other students that found out what happened about your dad? Like kind of how did that whole process happen with you and your peers and your classmates um, when they found out about your dad's story? Uh, in school, it was like, I think it's more... I think it's more common. I think it's more common that, you know, you your, one of your parents is in jail. So when I told, like, you know, if one of, if I asked one of my, one of my, I mean, I told one of my friends, like, yeah, my dad in prison, you know, they just want to know, like, oh, how long and, and, and what happened? You know, it's not, it's not like, uh, like, it's something that, you know, I, I feel like it's something that, you know, a lot of kids talk about in school to be where, where, where I went to school at. It's, a lot of, it's, just, it's just stuff that, that's common for us. Um, so um, just growing up, yeah, yeah, I think that that's just a common thing that we all talked about. And, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of kids had, had like, the, one, of the, one of their parents in jail or, or going through a situation to where they were, they were getting ready to go to jail uh, soon. Um, and, I, I, like, mine wasn't no different. And... They used to, you know, we just used to just talk about it and um, just, you know, talk about, you know, what happened and and everything and, uh, you know, just move on. Uh, it was, that, that's how common it was for us. What about when you went away to college? Because I know like UCLA isn't a predominantly black institution. Like for me in D.C., everybody, you know, similar to your story, we were once a chocolate city. So everybody kind of had, you know, those families where maybe if it wasn't your parent, it was your uncles or your cousins, but we all knew someone. And that's a really big difference. How, when I went to Penn state, it wasn't that common. So what about when you went off to college? Yeah. So yeah. when I went to college, um, I, I don't like, I don't think I told, I didn't tell that many people that, you know, that you know my situation and, and the situation with my dad. Um, most of the stuff you know people at the school found out about was like I remember like I was getting ready to get drafted or or this is well this is my junior year when I was getting ready to leave leave the school and my dad was getting a my dad was getting ready to have a a, a hearing or or his appeal or something like that. No, it's yes yeah, appeal I think and. Um, it was a court day. It was like sometime in like January or something like that, and uh, it was a big like a big deal. And you know, I think ESPN and somebody else had wrote like, wrote like an article about it, and um, that's when more people at the school started asking me like what the situation was. With my dad and they were pretty shocked because just because of how I carried myself and uh, the type of kid I was in school. Uh, with my teammates, like a lot a lot of my teammates came from the same situations that you know that I came from um, or, you know, they, they grew up in the same kind of neighborhoods or same kind of areas. So from with my teammates, they were more common. Uh, I mean, that was more common, you know, to talk about uh, in the locker room. But uh, when you talk about like just the, 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 just the, the normal, like just student body that, that we just, you know, we see, we see at parties and, and hang out with, um, it definitely was, you know, they definitely were like, you know, like what's going on. I wouldn't say like nobody really looked at me different. They were just surprised that, uh, like just hearing that my dad was in prison or, or you know, reading articles and seeing seeing why he was there. Um, I think like they start looking at me like like man, you kind of you kind of different than what you know how how you grew up. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was more like people looking at me like that more than um, than the other, you know, so. I wanted to ask, the, um, well, first I wanted to say, I definitely relate to being able to have like that close circle that you talked to about it. And then like, as far as the grander circle or the larger, you know, the collective being able to understand, it's like sometimes we don't really normalize a lot of conversations that could be normal. Like, it's uncomfortable, right, when, you know, they do look at you differently and they do um, not necessarily have judgments, but, like, their assumptions, you know, go to rest with them, you know. 
understanding the specific incidents and things. Um, but also normalizing that therapy of conversation and being able to talk. Like, I'm sure you had breakthroughs in the locker room with you just being able to talk with your buddies. If that, like, were to happen on a larger scale with, you know, everyone being able to understand that people do get locked up and we need to start looking at that differently, how we do treat, like, certain people, stigmas that they have towards jail is, you know, you just lock somebody up and throw away the key. Nobody thinks about the day-to-day or the process of an appeal or the process of reading law or the various opportunities that there are. Unfortunately, we find out when we get to jail, you know, our resources and tools that are here. So, like, all in all, I know I'm rambling, but my question is um, definitely as far as that double-sided um experience with the locker room conversations which were private and the university eventually figuring it out do you feel as though there was healing on a level for you your family as well as the people that got the story and would you what would you say to those athletes that are currently you know in college experiencing not necessarily the same experience as you but similar that was a long question so I mean I, I think I think I, I think talking about it uh is always good. I mean any any problem that you got, I think communication is, 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 is the is a huge key to, to a lot of problems. Um the thing the thing like with, with the with my teammates, with my teammates and talking to them talking to my close friends and, and, and all that, you know, about um about that situation, about the situation with my dad, um, those those were like the best times for me. Just to you know, if I had something on my chest, or uh, if I was feeling a, a, a type of way, or uh, or even if I just wanted to talk about it, or you know, I was going, I was leaving on on Sunday to go see my dad or some, and you know, they just asked me, you know, how the visit went and and stuff like that. You know, it was like it, it was it was cool to to talk to him and. Um, and you know, and and they and they started developing a relationship with my dad. Just being around, my dad always calling, and uh, you know, he being able to talk to them. Like, man, I seen y'all play, you know, the other day, and you know, great job, and, and all that. So that was that was cool, and that was uh, that that definitely you know helped me. Uh, but to like the to like everybody else that that really wasn't close to me, I didn't really like you know everybody really, you know. At the time, especially at the time, like just being in 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 my business at the time, because I didn't know, uh, like how you were saying, just the judgmental part. You know, I didn't know how how people were going going judge me. You know, what I'm saying they they I mean, they look at you different already. You know, just because you know you you there and you know you at a school like UCLA, so um, you know everybody look at you different already. Then they find out, you know, you. You, your dad is in prison, and uh, he in prison for for murder. He, you know, this, this, and that. So now they're looking at you like, like, uh, you know, this, like you are his son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, like, I, I never wanted to, you know, have you know everybody else, you know, in my business at the time. Um, like, like where I'm at with it now is just more. You know, I, I love you know talking, talking to people, um, you know, talking to kids, talking to everybody that, that go, that's going through the same situation that I that I, that, that I go through. Um, you know, it's definitely it helps me because it's like, you know, any knowledge or I mean, yeah, anything that I can give to somebody else and, or how I was feeling at the time, you know, what I'm saying I can if I can make that kid or that person feel better, then you know I'm all for it. So like that's where I'm at with it now. But at the time. Like I didn't want nobody in my business, like at the school or or nothing, because I didn't know how everybody was gonna look at me or judge me. Yeah, I definitely understand that because you felt this need to keep it personal, keep it enclosed, and I don't want to say you felt. I don't want to speak for your feelings, number one, but um, I think what I'm trying to get at is like you just felt the responsibility to protect yourself, you know, and that's a personal preference or a defense mechanism. 
And did you ever feel angry at your father for having to form like such a defense mechanism to begin with? And if so, how did you handle those feelings? Because I know for myself speaking, I blame my mom for not adapting to the American economy, being an immigrant and us, you know, ending up being homeless. Like I blamed her for that at one point. And was it fair as, you know, a 19 year old woman now? No, but as a young person, you just feel robbed of normalcy, mm -hmm. so. I did, man, I, that was like one of the toughest times. Like I was so mad at my dad when, like, when he left, like, Cause I, I, on top of that, I didn't understand like what, like what was going on, and my mom, like my mom used to, like my mom, like my, my mom is uh, like huge, just like you know she, she, she prays a lot. We we all pray a lot, but like she's, you know, she's always in church and and all that kind of stuff. She used to just sit us down, and we used to all sit in a circle, like. Like almost every, I think it was every day, honestly, or almost every day, we would sit in the in the in the middle of her room and just pray, like, and I ask for forgiveness, and like my mom, she tell me that because she knew I had built up anger, she knew like I was so mad at my dad for leaving, and she should just be like, man, you like you gotta forgive your dad, like I I know he left, and I know you know, the situation or whatever, but, um, and plus, you know, it was, you know, stuff, you know, some stuff was going on at home. Um, it was just, it was just a lot. It was a lot for me to handle. And like, I was so, I was so frustrated and, and frustrated by the situation and mad at my dad. And my mom just used to tell me like, you got to forgive him. And I think just me looking at her, like she was getting up every week, every weekend, going to go visit him um and like i can not like i can only imagine you know what like what she she was going through you know what i'm saying and um i wasn't even thinking of it like that uh you know as a kid you know i was just worried about just him leaving and and, and why and what's going on uh so but like looking back on it like just um i'm just i'm, I'm just thankful that my mom just um that she just told me, told me to, to forgive him. Um, and, and, you know, eventually, eventually I did. Uh, and, you know, she took me up there to see him all the time. So I, I really got a chance to, um, to build a relationship with my dad, you know what I'm saying? And, and she faithfully just went up there every week and took us, um, even sometimes when we didn't want to go, uh, at times where, you know, I was mad and I didn't want to go. Um, she just told us to to get up and, and, and come on. We used to sit there and we used to pray up there and uh, talk about it and stuff like that. And um, I'm just thankful, you know, for to her that she did that and she was, you know, strong enough to 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 go through that, you know, for us. Because um, her main priority was just her family and her kids and um, making sure, you know, her kids had, had have a relationship, you know, with their father. Um, so. Uh, I'm I'm definitely you know thankful for, to her for that, cause that could have went in a whole nother way. Like you never know. Like you know you don't have. I mean, you don't have a relationship with your dad. And who who knows what you know what I'd be doing. You know what I'm saying. So like now at this point in my life, like our relationship is is cool, and it's good. I mean, well I don't want to say it's cool. It's, it's a great relationship, and um just growing up, you know, every, every, every kid need their father. Every kid need, I mean, every kid need their parents. You know what I'm saying? It's, I mean, it's stuff that you take from both of them. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, it's just, I'm just thankful for her for that. Cause that could have went a whole nother way. And who knows what, what I, I would be, and who knows, you know, what I'd be doing now. So. Um, just quickly before Elias asks his next question, how do I just to clarify for our audience who will see this? How old were you at this time when everything was happening? Nine. I was nine when he went to prison. That's a young age. And um, yeah, I would like to ask. Um, it came to a point where you, you know, you talked about forgiving your father, right? But um, 
I want to go deeper into that. And I want to ask what brought you to a place where you could, you allow yourself to forgive your father in the first place? Uh, really, man, I truly just, you know, the Lord, my mom, and just, like, uh, just me being able to go go see him, honestly, uh, it was, like, it, I, don't, like, I don't think if I, if I wasn't, you know, consistently going up there and, you know, my mom just let me just do whatever I wanted to do, like, I don't, I don't think I, I would have ever forgave him or or ever, you know, had that relationship and, and move forward with that. Um, uh, I really just, really just give, give, give that credit to, to, you know, to God and, 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 and my mom. Like, my mom, like, she literally, literally drove two hours every day, uh, I mean, every week to, to go up. We, like, we end up buying a, or, or renting a, like, a little, like, sh like, shack thing out there, like, we damn near stayed out there for 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 a week or two, like sometimes, like, and um, yeah, like she, like it don't matter if it was Christmas, it was Christmas, and they had a visit on Christmas. She would drive us up there, we would spend time with him, and then we would open our presents like later on in the day. Like, she did so much to to make sure like she she kept our family like together, and she kept. Um, yeah, that she kept our family close, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, really, like, she she played a huge part of, you know, me forgiving my dad and just and, and me being able to move forward and and uh, develop that relationship with him. It's funny that you say, like, well, not funny. That's um, admirable that you say your um, mother and uh, your faith brought you through because, like, but my mom, she didn't badmouth my father. She allowed me to, like you said, create my own bond, create my own relationship with my dad and learn him. You know, she didn't speak on the experience she had or um, on what he was incarcerated for. My father was incarcerated for rape. So I know it's a very, um, it's a sensitive subject on both sides of the family. Um, and as far as healing and moving forward it really was up to that initial picture that my mother painted for me you know that initial um idea of him that she gave me i want to say i apologize my lack of words I, um it was like your father is your first experience of everything as far as the masculine in this world or as far as what to expect, what not to expect, what to do, what not to do. And um, I don't know. It's, there was a lot of tape on his character um, because of what he was locked up for. And even still to this day, like you still have to go to the state and announce a mistake that you made before you can rest your head. You know, you got to go in to see your... Um, and it was always hard for me to talk about these things with other people because, like you said, that judgment aspect of things, that people have their own perspectives and how they were raised. And so um, I wanted to ask, like, how do you think, not that it's important, but it does come out with human, how do you think um, people view your father as a parent with him being incarcerated? Like, my dad is still a cool, intelligent, wise dude. You know what I mean? He just so happened to get caught up in life. And he's still intelligent. Like, he was a ballet dancer. He had um, creative skills. It took him to different states, but it also caused him to have to be his own advocate at times and grow up very fast and um, learn a lot of the world by himself without support. Um, because mom didn't know how, but we have mothers that knew how. So I'm gonna be quiet and let you answer the question. Yeah, um, man, like I think everybody else painted the picture. Where like like where where I'm from, I think like it's so common. You know, every like you know everybody know your dad. Like everybody knew my dad. Um, and I think where I'm from, it, it's it's so common, and they you know they and they know. You know they know my dad and, and all that kind of stuff, so it wasn't like uh, I wasn't like really worried like about 
you know, how everybody, you know, like, viewed him because like, I knew he was, you know, everybody knew he was a good guy. But, like, like to everybody else, I think, like, they, I don't know. I, sometimes I, 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 like, I view, I think, I thought everybody, you know, viewed my dad as, like, this crazy, like, this crazy dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, because he convicted of, of murder. You know what I'm saying? And, um, like, my dad, like, he's, he's, he's a great, like, great person. Great father, uh, you know he's he's in his in all of his kids' lives, um, like for everything that 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 he tries to do, like I mean, like he can only do so much, but because the situation that he's in, but um, just for all the effort and time that he had, that he could have just been like, like you know I'm here and it just is what it is and. This is what happens where where we from, and it is what it is. Um, he didn't let that he didn't let that break him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my like my him and my mom are married to this day. Like and and yeah, it might sound like crazy, but their relationship is is going great. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, all the effort and time that he put into us and to you know. My mom, um, yeah, like he 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 he's a great person, and w- when he was out, like you know, I got so many memories, you know, you know, with my dad. My like my dad, like he's the first person that that introduced me to football and been at all my football practices, all my football games, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, when people like when people really start figuring out that you know my dad was in prison. I wasn't really too worried about uh like wh- how people thought of him because it was you know it's just like like I know I know who this person is I I know who my dad is and my mom like like again my mom like she's like the the rock of our whole family she never like talked crazy about my dad or uh she just always you know it's just you know a, a mistake and he got caught up you know doing some doing some at the wrong time and and that's what happened and um yeah you know our family we 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 are tight you know tight and real close family and uh you know we 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 just we move along and we we adjust and you know we move along as, you know as a family and uh you know again credit to you know my mom like you know not doing all that kind of stuff cuz she could have she could have been mad or you know he was out this day and she could have been mad and been like, uh, "Your dad is, is this and that," and that could have again could have went a whole another way. And, and and you know, I'm a mama's boy, and I could have I could have been like, "Oh yeah, well, well yeah, we, we yeah we don't care about him." Uh, so yeah, it's it's like my dad's great guy, and uh, yeah, he, he he does for the time that he has and the effort that he can put in, uh, he he does what he what, what he can for his family, and um, you know that's all you can ask. Um, that was really nice, Mr. Clark. I feel the exact same way about my dad. And I kind of spoke about that when I had my chance to be interviewed. Um, I feel like a lot of times in our communities, it seems like we have uh, we are from very similar communities, even though they're across the country. But I remember my dad first got locked up for his case. And a lot of people were calling my dad like a big homie. And it was kind of like he kind of got more of a uplifting statue for me while I'm just like what like I never really understood why and that never diminished his character um my dad was still a great father similar to your story and I'm glad that you had this relationship with your father now so I wanted to know and I'll close in question you know how can you encourage people who maybe don't have the same experience as you and I with their fathers and Joes because we understand that a lot of people their relationships kind of stop because like you said, a lot of dads, when they get there, it's just like, Hey, it is what it is. This is my story. And you and I both seem to have this great, ex- you know, this great example as a father who said, I'm here, but these are still my children and they still need me. So regardless of the mouths or the separation or distance, I'm still going to be a part of their life. So my question is um, what words would you say, or how would you encourage people who are going through opposite of what we went through? And just to add on that before you answer that question, number one, I know like your dad must be very proud of you. 
Um, and I was also wondering, does he still get the chance to watch you play while in prison? And, you know, how does he still try to give you advice about playing? And how is that relationship continued, still uplifted, like something you're proud of, proud of your identity? Yeah, he's, so I'm gonna answer that question first, just, um, he's, you know, my biggest fan. Um, he's like, I walk into uh, into the facility where he at now and like everybody knows knows me. He talks about me all day. Like, oh man, this is my son and like all the officers um know me. Um like he talks about me all day. All he does is go in front of that T V every Sunday and and if that game if our game is on, he telling every I mean if our one our one of our games is on, he telling somebody to turn the channel and, and, and uh for I mean to to watch my game. So like he watching every game that's on T V that um and we on T V a lot, he he's watching every every single one. So he probably probably he probably see like out of sixteen well seventeen games now, but out of sixteen games, he probably watch a good like ten of them out of the year and all including the playoffs if we uh if we go to the playoffs. So um yeah he's He's always, you know, there. And then uh, he calls me, you know, all the time after the game. Um, if the game is, isn't too late, uh, he's able to, to get a call in. Or, um, you know, my mama tell my mama be telling me, you know, my my dad gonna call me in the morning. He call me that next morning. We would talk. He have like four, three or four phone calls. He he talked to me like thirty minutes about, you know, what was going on and. If he see me saying something to somebody, what, what was I saying to this person? And he just want to know everything. So, um, yeah, man, he, he's he's definitely like the my my biggest fan. Um, and you know, even though he's watching from afar and stuff, you know, he's uh, he calls me before every game um, when I'm in the locker room warming up. Uh, he calls me like like at least two three hours before the game. He makes sure you know he time it up to where he a know you know, when I'm warming up or when I'm going to be in a locker room. And he does that, you know, faithfully every week. So I talk to him before every game uh, every, and after every game. Um, and, you know, we talk about football, you know, all day. And uh, to answer the other question, uh, I would just say, man, just like I, I think communication is, is the is the the biggest key. Like I think so many people hold stuff in. And I mean, like I, I'm, I'm speaking for myself. I, I like I'm quiet. Um, I don't really like letting people into my business and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and but I, I think just communication, like, is is the is the main key, like to to a lot of to a lot of things, and and uh, it can fix a lot of things. Um, and just you know, try to find somebody to lean on to help you. You know, you know, throughout, you know, through tough times, because it's, it's always going to be a tough time uh, going through that through that situation, and uh, just you know, with um, that person that's in in prison, you know, just like I think they just got to understand that you know it's bigger, like like developing a relationship with your kid is bigger than you know anything. You know what I'm saying? And um, people got to just you know just just Think about that, you know. Think about that when they're doing what they're doing. But if they do get caught up and they get in this situation, you know. Think about like don't just give up and 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 run and run away from from the problem. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, face it head on and uh, still try to be be in your in your kid's life because you, you you never know. You never know what can what can come out of it. Uh, you never know what can happen and. Uh, uh, that's what I. That's what I would say. Is just communication and just, uh, you know, just staying, just staying grounded and staying, and, and just persevere through it. But uh, communication is definitely key for, for me. Like that's the biggest thing that I had to do is explain my feelings, uh, talk to talk to my dad, um, talk to my mom, tell her how I'm feeling, so they know how to be. You know, they know how to be better parents and they know how to react and 
and all that kind of stuff. And um, I think that that's definitely what helped my family stay together and me develop my relationship with my dad. And um, yeah, that was so that was the key for me. Um, thank you so much for your time, for being here. Thank you for being so open, for sharing. I know I definitely enjoyed this. I'm definitely going to take the initiative to start having conversations with my parents and not just my dad, but my mom as well. Um, I really appreciate it. And I'm so glad to, you know, see how well you're doing in life despite having your story. And I'm pretty sure that your child will, you know, grow up and understand healthy communications because you have all of that impact in you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys too. Um, this is great. Um, just being able to do this, like, just like, like I said, like just me talking about this, like y'all don't know, you know, how much it do for me. You know what I'm saying? This is, this, this is definitely cool. Um, and you know, I wish all you guys the best and I uh, really appreciate this. Say like, um, it's, in our community, especially, it's very hard, like with trauma, for us to open back up, for us to come back to who we are, because we are a loving people. We are a people who believe in family, who believe in it takes a child to raise a village. So it's cool. This was cool. This was nice. It is healing. It really is having these conversations, like being able to share and give. And also to triumph, like you're an example that you can do it. You can, you know, inspiration a lot. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here, especially. Sure. Thank you. I also want to echo everything that they said. And I also want to bring in like another aspect, especially when people first view this episode, you know, people have the misconception. Oh, he's a celebrity, you know, he's here. He made it. Everything's fine. Um, but when people don't take the time to learn the character behind the player, you know, you miss a whole bunch of dimensions that make you who you are. It's so much bigger than what's on the field. And this is coming from somebody who doesn't watch football at all, but, you know, I'm positive that you're great. You know, black men are great, period. Um, but <laughs> besides that, you know, I'm really thankful for you being here. And for the audience, if you've been keeping up, you already know how we end these episodes all the time. Now you know. I want to say uh, one last thing. Um, I thank you because, you know, I know opening up is not easy, especially when it has to do with someone you love or a person yourself incarcerated. Um, my person was incarcerated. So me coming home and, and I didn't really want to open up, you know, but um, meeting people like this and meeting people who I could express myself allows me to be my um, mindful of my emotions and how to open it properly. So I think, uh, like you said, a major part of it was, you know, God, and I believe in God. So, you know, I think um, I want to thank you for expressing that, you know, that this is always a higher being or something out there looking out for you, you know. For sure, man. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, everybody got to understand. You know, we all we all go through through the same things, man. We all human at the end of the day, and we all you know go through stuff. So um, again, I want to appreciate. I just want to say appreciate y'all. Um, just how Mia said, this is definitely healing. You know, for for I'm sure all of us, but um, especially like for for me, just talking about it it is for me too so uh, I just want to say appreciate y'all um, Mr. Clark we'd like to join us in saying and now you know we can all kind of say that together that's usually that's what Zanae was trying to say that's how we close it out so I think we can all unmute ourselves and you can say it with us you can count us off we can follow you because this is your story right. so when are you ready this is Kenny Clark and now you know hi my name is Mia I've shared my story with you, now you know. And if you want to share your story, feel free to. Um, we have resources available if you want to know how to deal with certain things or educate yourself and brush up on a couple subjects. If you want a peer support group where you have like-minded people that are able to give you the support that you need, sometimes with our parents, 
And even with our family, we're unable to get the support we need. So we need it from our like-minded friends. If you want a mentor, somebody that's older than you, that's not your family, someone you don't know, someone that you can get to know and help groom you on the journey. Well, not groom, but, you know, elevate. We have an educator resource center and that's for if you're a teacher if you're a teacher and you really really want to take your teaching experience to the next level and really leave a mark on your students and be able to do healing not necessarily like you're a therapist but everybody plays their part and conversation is healing as we've seen through this podcast and we also have our website instagram tiktok we will be on social media you will see us so just know that the resources are here. The help is here. Just reach out. That's what we did. <laughs>